So here I am today, um, virtually, with uh, my good friend, um, Raphael Rondon, um, all the way from Florida in the USA. Um, and I'm really grateful that he could spare his time to speak with me because I know he's a really busy guy. Um, so, so first of all, Raphael, just um, give us a little bit about your background. So um, where you came from originally and uh, what you're doing. Yes, definitely. Um, thank you for having me, first of all, part of this. It is an honor. Uh, it's been a while. We've been trying to connect in a separate way after I graduated. But um, I came, I started in, I mean, it's a long time ago. As you can see, I'm very young. Uh, <laughs> I started from, uh, I graduated in 1990 in New York City. That's where I was born and raised. And I started the hygiene career there. That was my first one. I went into a hospital and that's where I started practicing. And then I went to a, after that, a private office and worked for a year or so. But I came to Florida after that. So I've been in Florida now for maybe now um, 28 years or so that I've been in Florida. Wow. And, and I landed here and not knowing that I had to retake wow. my national boards again because of the time frame that had passed in between. I mean, Florida has a different, of course, the laws are different. So in that time, we had to retake nationals and practical all over again. It was like starting from scratch. So it, it took so me a little bit because I... So just for our non-USA um, listeners, just explain what national boards are. Yeah, we, that's where we take our, our, to get our licenses in that particular state. So you have to go and take the actual written of uh, everything you studied from, everything that you remember from Perio yeah. and then of course uh, public health. And uh, um, I mean, there's so many involved things there. It's been such a long time that I took it that now I don't remember all the, the details, but there was a lot of things in there that you had pharmacology, pathology. There was a lot of things that you have to remember. And I had been a while that I had left school. So I had to retrain myself and re-study again to take the nationals. So, so, when, so when you moved from New York to Florida, you did you have a family then? I did not, uh, but I was already um, dating my wife. I wasn't married yet, I dated my wife. So we moved to Florida together. And uh, here this, I heard like six months into being in Florida, we got married. So then I started my family. Thank you. And I, but at that time, still, I didn't have my license for Florida. So it was like, uh, she practically pushed me, go ahead and do it, go ahead and do it, go ahead and do it. Because I was like, not wanting to based on going to that whole eight hour exam, written thinking, going back and then trying to study every night. I was, I was already working in an office that um, they were, I was placing IVs because in New York City in the hospital, I was placing IVs. So a doctor here hired me to place the IVs and get, because he was doing surgeries in the office, but it was more not the mouth, it was the feet, it was a podiatrist. So it was interesting, I went from the mouth to the feet. So I was here for a few years working a podiatrist, which I learned so much in that area too, but um, it was, uh, he hired me because of uh, being able to place the IVs and get the patient um, just uh, to sleep a little bit while they do the surgery. I, I used to know a hygienist that was also a chiropodist. And I, I used to joke. I used to joke with her, like, "Whatever you do, don't tell a patient to have a rinse out when you're finished." <laughs> That's <is> funny. <laughs> That's so, a good so, one. so you've now got um, two children. I have three. I have three my, children. I have, yeah, three. I have a girl. She's 26. She's my oldest. I have my middle one. He's um, 21, and my youngest is 19. Fantastic. So I two boys. Are yeah. Are they are they all still living with you? Uh, actually, my youngest only is the one that's living with me. The other, my daughter moved to Chicago. She works in a in a, as a business manager. Well, she does finances for a mega church there, and she does the worship as well. She's mm. really good. Not because, not because I'm the dad, but she's very good with the worship part of it and her singing. And my son, my middle one, is in the Air Force. Uh, Air Force with uh, air traffic controller. That's where his job is there. And then my youngest is studying to be a pilot. And he's doing that home. Yeah. Wow. So that's yeah. fantastic. And they both chose the right service, the role in the Air Force. Yeah, well, the youngest is not the Air Force. He's just doing it through schooling here. Wow, um, fantastic. So yeah, the middle one is one through the Air Force. Yeah. Brilliant. You must be very proud. Yeah, I feel really good. It's, yes. it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. So, and so is the church important to your life as well? It's very important. Yeah, it is part of my beginnings, my start, my, you know, everything, my center, because, you know, you need some, 
someone like I believe in God and I believe that he, sh you know, he does and carries you and all that good stuff. So brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. So you were then in clinical practice, um, a guy genist. How, how, did, how did that work out for you? It was interesting when I, when I started as a hygienist, I worked in hospital, so it didn't, it was no feeling to it in the sense of no differences in the sense hospitals hospital is a hospital, there's different type of people. You work with different people. So it doesn't feel like you're a guy amongst ladies. And I was the only hygienist at that time in that hospital. So it didn't feel awkward. Um, but, but yes, when I moved to Florida, that was the moment that was interesting. I did an interview with a doctor, a female uh, a dentist, that she um, said, I'm going to hire you. But the first thing she told me right there and then, but please do not wear a tie. You know, because she was female in the in the office, and for her to say, you know, because people could confuse uh, dentists, because that was the most biggest thing was males that were dentists compared to a lady dentist. So she wanted to make that clear from the beginning to help me understand, you know, so the patient won't be confused of who's who, hygienist and dentist. So it was interesting, but that I really didn't have an issue. I feel like I, I was blessed in that sense that wherever I worked, I felt um, not the difference. Maybe a little bit with the patients because they were not used to a male. They say, "Oh my God, you, you're you're a hygienist. You got big hands," because that's the mentality. I said, "But the dentist, the dentist that just saw you, is a man. It has big hands too." So it was like, they were like, "Oh yeah, you're right." So it made sense after the. But yeah. they're not used. To, they were not used to seeing a man as a hygienist, and that's the way it was. I felt that because after they got used to me as a hygienist, I think there was a good respect also being there was a, a man as a hygienist and there was respect that anything that I brought up in conversation or because of the patient's needs, it was accepted. It was like, uh, okay, just do it. You know, that was like a different thing compared to even females that were in the same practice that sometimes were not able to get success in patient with patients when it comes to treatment. So it was interesting how the di dynamic of mm -hmm. men and female in a practice, how patients perceive things and how they receive things as well. Very interesting. That's a whole different discussion. A topic, yes. Wow. So then I think it was 2014, you decided to complete your bachelor's degree. Yes, and, I did. Um, so so why, why did you do that? I wanted to, because in my time, uh, we, there was more, uh, the program I went through was uh, to get a associate's degree, even though you take so many courses, you probably needed two more to get that bachelor's degree because you're there you know, for so many years and, and in the end you leave with an associate's degree. But I wanted to um, put something, at least to reach that level of, of being getting a bachelor's degree. And I felt, because at the moment where I was, I was already getting into that atmosphere of being a trainer and a mentor for organization at that time. But I felt that that would make me feel more uh, secure of myself, of um, having a, a different degree or elevating myself into um, when it comes to my career. Did you feel like you'd already earned it anyway with your associates? I, kinda, I think I was there, but I think it was for me to believe in myself that I could reach another goal. Yeah. Cool. So, so you chose you chose to do it with us at OHU. Good choice. Um, so, yeah. have, any memories from that those six months that you spent with us? It was amazing, I have to say, because uh, at first I didn't think I was going to have the time. That was one of my biggest things. I thinking I don't mm. want to have time to do this because I was working. So it was mm. kind of like running around and trying to do what I had to do because of the requirements of the course and, and what you need to finalize with. So, but once I got in, it felt so good because the connection and, and the brainstorming and, um, and putting everything together to do the, the last project of the whole uh, program, which is research. It was research and trying to get that in place was amazing because it made me really think in a different way because I'm not a researcher or so anything like that. So, it be, but I became that within that process because it, it really taught me how to break it down and how to get there and, and kind of do studies that will give in the end some type of evidence of support or even saying, no, it's not gonna work. So it was really good to be part of that for that six months, definitely. It's brilliant. And we're really proud to have you as a graduate, part of Thank our alumni. Too. And I, I, I dug you. out, as I said, I dug out your paper from 2014 and it's and it's something you should still be proud of 
it still thank stands you. up and it's still really relevant. So well done. That's really good. Thank um, you. Thank you. So then um, when you left us, you, you started um, Mr. RDH. Tell us about that. Yes, um, as we know, uh, there's very few male, male hygienists out there. So I felt that there was a need of creating something as a support group or empowerment group, uh, because I was hearing a lot of male hygienists, you know, if I go in and it doesn't work, I'll get out. It's like practically uh, going to a marriage array saying, if this doesn't work, I'm going to divorce you you know, from the beginning. And, and I was not really happy with that because I think the profession that we carry is a huge profession, is making a difference with so many patients and in different ways. We're not just doing oral health, we're doing overall health. And because of the studies and evidence of systemic diseases and all that good stuff. So to me, to be part of something, you have to believe in it and continue developing it. It's not just separating ourselves with Mr. RDH, which is the name that I named it, Mr. RDH. It was not, it's not to se separate um, the profession, us from the profession, but to make our profession stronger. So um, I feel by doing that, more men will be, feel empowered uh, to come into profession to start because I go to a lot of high schools here and there just talking about our profession, but I really kind of focus on the men uh, and the students that are there to try to motivate them to be hygienists. Um, because as we know, nurses started that way. It was all about females. And, and we see now there's a big amount of male nurses out there. And they also have an association of male nurses. So that's what I wanted to create within our world to empower, grow, and, and make our profession stronger as we are. That's brilliant. So did you, what sort of, what sort of um, response did you get when you started that? Um, at the beginning, it was like, oh, that's, it's a good idea, but how are you going to do it? And, and it's true. Still, still after so many years, I do have a page, I have almost like 800 male hygienists, but men, as we know, we're a little different in the sense we, men and men don't have social media. They don't have that. It's not part of their thing. So it's like, it's hard to get them to get there because they don't have a social media to be part of that group. And, and then now I think it's being a little bit different because we have to be very careful because it's not excluding anybody, it's including and being part of uh, the association. So my mindset was all about support and empowerment. So it's not even, the part about the separation of a man. Uh, but right now, the, the world that we're living, we want to make sure we're also inclusive of everybody. And because everybody's different, it's just creating empowerment. That was my biggest focus. So for any um, male hygienists listening, that's Mr. RDH on Facebook. Drop, uh, yes. drop Raphael a line and I'm sure he'll let you in. Yes, definitely. So um, do you think it's important? Do you think it's important that... Um, that male hygienists have a, a separate voice and somewhere where they can talk um, away from female hygienists? I, I believe so because we, we all go through different struggles in, in practices, maybe no less than, bef less than before, but it's still there. I mean, um, I hear a lot of males that say, well, when I'm a hygienist in this particular practice, they even ha have me change light bulbs. They make me work and do more, uh, you know, things like that, which is okay. You know, it's team playing, being a team player. But normally, they say if, if there was a female, would they ask her to come to change the level? So it's like it's like a little things like that that still um, could take away from how you feel as a male, man hygienist in a practice, um, and also depending on if it's a male dentist, all that those pieces there. Sometimes there's also a struggle with that as well. Then, like I started from the beginning. Even sometimes with the female, they don't want to feel like, you know, you're the dentist and I'm the hygienist and yeah. that feeling. So it's kind of little things that by having a group, you get to overcome it, have conversations, how to overcome that and how to be uh, what you're there for to service a patient, taking care of the patient. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think having that support network is a really good idea. Knowing that somewhere you can go somewhere and vent or ask advice. I think mm -hmm. is a really good idea. Well done for starting that initiative. Yeah, thank you. So, um, and then you you went up in the big world of the corporates. So yes. tell us about that. So that's well, that's where you are now. Yeah, that's where I'm now. I'm, I actually started um, when I moved to Florida and all that good story that I said earlier. And then I landed in a uh, DSO, um, which is uh, Coast Dental. Um, I started as a hygienist, practicing hygienist, 
and they asked me if I could, um, if they could have hygienists come through me in the sense of um, shadowing me in the process. And probably I was like, probably like six months into it. And I said, sure, yeah. I mean, so my part was uh, bringing the onboarding the hygienist and shadowing me to the process and using this, the, our system, computer system and verbalizing how to talk to the patient about certain things and care and all that good stuff. And maybe within a year, they open up a position of a hygiene administrator for the company. And I have 11 uh, people that applied inside and outside people came in, applied for the position, had to do a presentation. Um, I was blessed to get the position. So I started from there, then I got out of the chair and I started training, coaching and mentoring hygienists. And it's all about standard of care. It was all focused on the care of the patient and doing the right thing for them based on the diagnosis or, or what we were gathering. So I was going office to office doing the training and, and that really, uh, I had a good mentor. Her, her name is uh, Janet Hegeman, she, amazing person. She really mentored me uh, and, and taught me how to, you know, be the best that I could be in, in what I did based on standard of care, uh, verbiage, communication styles and things like that. She was amazing. She's amazing. I mean, I still talk to her after years. And after that, um, I worked, I continued working there for like 10 years doing the mentoring. And then I was um, actually asked to go to a different company. And there I felt like I completely grew more because it was, it really took me out of the box. It was uh, 23 uh, comp uh, what can I say, groups within the company. Well, the name wow. of the company was American, American Dental Partners. So they had 23 groups in different states. And that really taught me how to flex myself in different direction because in every state there was doctor groups that d delivered or said did things differently when it comes to the service that we're rendering to the patients. You know, some said uh, do SRP at this level or don't place antibiotic here or don't do it here or do it at this number. So it was different. So it showed me how to be flexible and be able to how to work with the teams in that area to still ensure that the patient was getting the best quality service that it was needed. So that really taught me for it. And I was there for 11 years. And then I recently was asked to, now I've been now, it was actually two years now, uh, incredible time goes very quickly, um, to be the VP of hygiene operations for Cold Center. So now I really, uh, really developed the entire organization in the sense of uh, anything that's supposed to do with hygiene. I, we have a great team under me that are hygiene directors that are amazing. We work together to accomplish the goal of giving the patient the best care and be able to empower hygienists to do the right thing within the organization. That's fantastic. So, so how many um, hygienists have you got at Coast Dental? Right now, we have 142 hygienists. Wow. And growing. And growing. We're still developing, um, adding more hygienists in the practices where we still have some openings throughout. So it's a good company. We really have turned it over to patient care, standardized care, you know, following the academic presentology and the ADA guidelines, period is you know some people are scared of dsl oh my god all about production and all that it's not like that uh, it, it's really not like that it's really ensuring that we could educate our patients on their needs and let the patient decide if they want it or not but it doesn't change their needs it, it's all about us focusing on let's educate more educate more until they finally get it or do it w one step at a time to finalize their treatment wow that's um that sounds great. I mean, the fact that they've got a nice support network as well, knowing they're going to work for you and they've, they've got that support, I think would, would be great. Yeah. So, so, so where does Raphael see himself in five years time? Ooh, that's a very good question. Um, I think my, my, my current boss asked me that when he interviewed me two years ago. <laughs> and I told him, and listen to this, this is a funny moment. I told him, really, I would like to be the CEO. <laughs> and I How about your job. And, well, but at first I didn't know he was the CEO. I've <laughs> known him for a while. I mean, oh, he's, um, he's, 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 uh, he's a great person. I've known him since I was here before. And it's like, I didn't know his title was that at all. I was just, hey, his name is Derek. Hey, Derek, Derek, Derek. And, and then from there, uh, when I got home and I got the offer, I see that it says, you know, uh, Derek Diasti, CEO. I said, oh my Lord, didn't I say that? That I probably want his job. So I want to get to that level. I think that um, yeah. I know enough about the business. Um, I, the clinical part of it, I love and I just, that's my life. Um, and 
but the operation piece I've learned too throughout the years. I was a director of, high, of, um, of operations for the other company I was with, uh, American Dental Partners. And I've, even with, um, with Coast Dental, at one time I was a district manager, operational, and I was dental. So I know both worlds and I love, I, I feel like I'm able to unite it together, become it one, but sometimes it's just a little separation and it shouldn't be because we're, we're all working for the same path, the same goal in the end, the patient. So I feel like one day I would like to see myself in five, if five years, I would like to see myself in that level. Um, of course, clinical is always going to be my heart. That's not going to change me because I, I love what we do as, you know, but I think we could carry it together. Fantastic. So what advice would you give somebody that was wanting to sit where you are now? It takes time. Don't, don't feel like you are a hygienist right now. You just graduated and you want to get to be the VP of hygiene operations in, in a day. I feel it takes time because throughout the years, even when I thought that I was ready, I wasn't ready. I, it took time for me to get to this level and in probably 18 years of, of being a, a mentor, a director and getting into different things of training and even operations to get me to this where I am now, it takes time. So slow down, learn, get the experience, get a good you know support leadership piece under you, get a mentor that will also help you carry you and speak to you so you could talk back and forth, take leadership courses. I did four years of leadership courses as well because I felt that it's needed and to be successful in what you're doing because everybody's different. So you have to deal with different people and know how to speak and how to bring yourself into a conversation or how to convert a person from believing to not believing using leadership styles. So there's a lot of good things out there. So take your time, learn, get the experience, and then you, you'll be ready. And still sometimes I'm still learning. I'm still learning at this time. And complete your bachelor's with OHU. You forgot that one. Yes, complete your bachelor's. Don't let that go. I think that really, I think it empowers you because it really empowered me once I got that. I really brought me into a different level of, you know, and associates are great, guys. I'm not putting that down, but it really brings you into having a little more power for yourself, you know, and that makes you believe in yourself more and be able to do better things throughout. Do you know, it's really funny. When we first started this 12 years ago, we, um, our vision was to um, re-motivate clinical hygienists to get them to think differently about their patients and a lot a lot of them are continuing in that role um, but a huge amount have actually self-discovered that they yeah. got a lot more potential and they're mm -hmm. actually moving out of the clinical environment into other fields like you've done um, and we've got quite a few now that are in actual leadership roles um, all over the world so it's it really is interesting I think it's just kind of making that beginning to get people to think a little bit differently yeah and that's what happened to me <laughs> fantastic so um thank you extremely hugely amounts for um your time really appreciate it 